day everyone, we are here to present to you our book review about the Moby Dick. The book was written by an American author, Herman Melville, and it was published on October 1851. So, before we proceed, I will present to you the order of review points. First, I will provide some information about the author's background. Second is a summary of the story. Next is the comments on plot. We will tell you of what we have noticed about this book. Next is comparison and contrast between Moby Dick and the other great books. We will also compare the characters in the Moby Dick and to the other characters from different novel books. We also had predictions about the story. And next is our interpretation and the conclusion. Herman Melville was born on August 1, 1819 in New York and the third of the eight children of Alan Melville and Maria Gansevoort. His family had enjoyed a prosperous life for many years due to his father's success as a high-end importer and merchant. When his father died suddenly in 1832, finances diminished significantly. During the 1830s, he was enrolled at the Albany Academy and Albany Classical School where he studied classic literature and began writing poems, essays, and short stories. He was unable to gain a coveted job where Melville instead followed his older brother's suggestion to work as a crew member on a boat. He became a cabin boy from a trade ship for four months, then he became a wheeler and traveled to sea for three years. These experiences were his basis and inspiration in making his own novel books like Taipei, Omu, and his famous book Mobile Dick, which is the book that we are reviewing. Now for the summary of the story, it starts with the line, Call me Ishmael. Ishmael, the first person narrator of the story, as the story is partly narrated by him. He is described as smart and accepting, but stuck up, gullible, and contradictory. He is from Manhattan and has always wanted to go out to sea for a journey to become an ordinary sailor. By means of being a sailor, he wants to go for a whaling ship instead of just an ordinary ship, ordinary merchant ship. By the way, this story is also about a whaling voyage, which is very popular in the earlier days, especially in Northern America, as it has usable benefits such as meat and blubber, which can be turned into a type of oil, that can be used also in different ways back in the earlier days. For Ishmael's journey, he eventually traveled to New Bedford, a city in Massachusetts, Massachusetts which is known for whaling and is the center of whaling industry in the earlier days. He was just temporarily staying in New Bedford. And during his stay in there, he meets a great partner and is soon to be companion on for a quest for a voyage. This friend of Ishmael is named as Wigwag, a pagan whose body is filled with tribal tattoos. He is a skilled warrior and friendly who is very loyal to Ishmael despite being a pagan so that is for you guys to figure out in the book how did they meet each other and how did they build a very strong relationship or partnership with each other and how skilled how skilled quick way really is as a warrior so since the day they become they became friends they both went to Nantucket to apply as sailors for, whale, for a whaling ship. The ship choice is to be decided by Ishmael. So, 
during that day there were three ships set to sail for a three year contract. So after deciding Ishmael had chosen chosen the ship chosen the peak one. So both Ishmael are now in the peak one. Upon boarding the ship, they will now meet Captain Ahab. The savage and moody captain was also missing a leg. He is a depressed and angry captain and is described as grand, ungodly, godlike man because he is so brutal in terms of will. There is also a sinister in his, inside his mind, a rage, obsession, and a monomania onto someone or something. That's what we, that's what you must also know about the story. You can search for it, and you know the, so that you can know the reason behind Captain Ahab's depression and anger. Might as well as the information about how he lost his leg. So uh, after several months of their voyage, Captain Ahab has finally built his agenda or a real intention for their voyage. So on the deck. Captain Ahab has gathered the whole crew for a meeting and to tell them that they are going to hunt for a creature named as Moby Dick. The legendary white whale or sperm whale or sperm whale which is known throughout the seas and for all sailors it is known to attack ships or sailors especially when it is hard and is being avoided to hunt down when encountered. Upon hearing the captain's motive, the whole crew hesitated and even Ishmael and his first mate did contradict to the idea of the captain. So, but somehow Ahab managed to encourage everyone after their discussion. So you guys should search that. How did the uh, Captain, how did Captain Ahab pull the wool, pull the wool crew along with his plan? What kind of reward did he propose to give? And why is Captain eager to hunt this legendary creature, even though many are afraid to eat? On their voyage, Captain Ahab had already a doom prophecy for his life from someone on the crew which can foretell it. And after that, before passing the Pacific Ocean, the ship went through a storm in which Captain Ahab, along with his preparations, received a creepy and horrific sign from heavens. He took it as a good omen for their final preparations for the chase. So that's another point for you guys to find out in the story. What exactly was that moment that Captain Ahab was seeing along with his rituals? So after that, the long-awaited chase has finally come to its end. And so the final hunt is done. So what do you think happened after the final chase? So you guys should read about that, the tragic ending of the story. So now that the summary has been told, I'm here for the comments about the plots and scenarios and utterances in the story. Uh, I'm gonna give some comments for the characters. First, the starting line of the story, call me Ishmael, as of course the first person narrator. Um, it indicates something about the story. It tells us that the whole story is Ishmael's narration on Ahab's obs obsessive quest but the story's main protagonist is considered as Ahab and there's also not much to reveal about Ishmael's self to the readers in fact he plays only a minor role in the story and is described as smart and accepting it seems that he's been used on the end as an instrument by the author a lesser image to be a character in the story but more like an instrument by the author it 
it's like the author um, of the book that put it himself as an author in the story as a character so that is why Ishmael's role is uniquely separated from the story but still a part for the amazing voyage next is the ungodly captain Ahab the story is centered to this man and his obsessive quest for the mabiti as I am reading the story up until the middle part and knowing about Ahab's vision and mission, my interest to finish up the whole story surged and I was really caught up to his goals and how it would end up. Why is he really obsessed this creature at first? So, Upon, upon knowing that the real reason behind his obsession for this whale since at the beginning of his whaling life is vengeance for the whale. So still, I will tell more about his vengeance. I'll leave it there so that you will end up being completely spoiled. But how could really a single individual end up seeking revenge on a natural creature? How could they have become so ungodly and obsessed over a single wheel? But what inside? But what's inside Ahab's mind and can believe is the most unbelievable part. As part of his lines in the story, Ahab believes that the wheel is the embodiment of all evil for the sailors, and that the wheel represents power which lines limits and controls men. So I have cities as a symbol for events for the sailors and in addition to that he also believes that there is a known reasoning behind unreasoning mask. It is his belief that it is God who controls this nature's beauty that we are indirectly seeing. That is, that is, even if it's God who controls these creatures, it can stop him from getting his revenge. This is also the reason now behind his ungodly characters and the reason why he is called as ungodly, ungodly, godlike man. My name is Jeratulan Ruiji Canones, so now I'm here to give comparison of the main characters of the book. When I read the book Moby Dick, it suddenly popped up to my mind and made me ask what book should I compare to the book that I read. So I did a research and the best book that I will be comparing is the book entitled The Old Man and the Sea. As I read the Moby Dick, I can compare it to The Old Man in the Sea. The 1851 Nobel Moby Dick is a masterpiece of an American author, Herman Neville. It was a singular work of genius that is narrated by Ishmael, which is a sailor who goes on a willing voyage led by someone who is obsessed, obsessed with getting revenge on a certain white whale and that is Captain Ahab. The Old Man and the Sea is a famous work of American novelist Ernest Hemingway. Moving on to the similarities, the main characters of The Old Man and the Moby Dick have the knowledge of the sea life and the experience sea life but both envision their mission the same way with a strong mentality and perseverance they both have passed many circumstances in catching their target but they didn't lose their strength and they never give up because they are both clear about their vision the differences they both have struggles but one fights for hope and the other one fights revenge. Captain Ahab is someone who's obsessed in getting 
revenge. He wants to make the white whale pay for the damage it cost him. He is a representation of someone who's not contented with what life has offered to him. And just like other people, he is someone who can get his satisfaction through vengeance even if there is no assurance at all. I opted to compare both novels because they are similar when it comes to the setting and when it comes to struggles. They both have the same reason of their struggle. They novel portrayed, portrayed determination and no willingness to give up in any situation is in at any hard times to just keep on going and upon reading these novels I think it could help many people to have a clear vision to focus on your goal just trust the process and keep going what you are doing that's all for the comparison so while I am reading halfway to the book here are my predictions on how the story would end first I thought or expect that Ishmael would be the slayer of the wild whale since he was narrating the story and by that a miracle he can kill this legendary creature and also thinking that he was the main protagonist of the story because he was introduced first in chapter 1 but in fact it is Captain Ahab the main protagonist of the story. Second, I also did think Ishmael's friend uh, Quick Quick would be the key to slaying the whale since he is the most skilled harpooner in the ship. And lastly, my prediction for Captain Ahab. Thinking that the chase for the whale was just a simple obsessive vengeance, Captain Ahab can finally claim his revenge for the for their voyage as I am also confidently reading and waiting for the whale's action from the chase. So you guys should also figure this out. Uh, if one of these predictions did happen as the ending of the story is all in the book with the reading link description indicated on the references. The novel Moby Dick or the Whale is not just about whalers hunting for whales and a captain who is in a, in a chase for a certain white whale for the sake of his own revenge. It is also a story that teaches us a lesson in life that we can use and apply in our daily living. Anger and hatred can make us go crazy as we drive into madness, putting our lives in grave danger. Because of that resentment on something, we tend to seek revenge to satisfy ourselves as we achieve the revenge that we want. Seeking vengeance can only lead to tragedic happenings. Captain Ahab thinks that he is the captain of his fate and he is the master of his soul. He deluded himself, he became proud and does not accept any form of help. And that's why he suffered from it. He had gone against God. He cast himself out of his family and making the sea and the ship his only true home. He enslaved the crew to a false communion, encouraging the worst in their nature and presenting it as a merit. In the story, Captain Ahab said that it is always a fair fight and we always win. Little did he know that it is not it is not always winning especially when the enemy is more powerful and smarter i like to use the term um, home court advantage clearly the whale moby dick has the advantage against captain ahab and his crew because it is in the ocean which is moby dick's territory once you're in his ter territory, you'll be sorry. It is like digging your own grave. There's a phrase, a dead whale or a stove boat. A line lifted from the story. In practical terms, it means either you kill the whale or the whale kills you. 
it is also the whalers or the whales whalemen's motto meaning failure is not an option captain ahab also state that sometimes dogs dogs need canaling and mad dogs need restraint he doesn't know that it's like speaking for himself he is like a mad dog that needs to be put in chain in order to behave the weight whale symbolizes force beyond human control including nature god and faith also it represents ahab's impossible goals and works against the free exercise of human will in father mapple sermon early in the novel the whale or the great fish is an is an, an agent of god's wrath and a call to repentance for ahab's madness however it symbolizes evil personified he he throws his entire life into his pursuit of moby dick's destruction and lay his men's life on on the line as well the ship the peacod the peacod is the critical symbol of the book a representation of the world itself presents an earth populated by humanity's diversity the different men aboard the ship the danger it it encounters and the struggles those on board must face all mirror the differences dangers and struggles of human life and society as a as a small society separated by distance from the rest of the humanity it is also represents both isolation and community the small boats on a revenge quest afloat in what seems like a timeless infinite sea is a symbol for for the grand cosmic meaninglessness of our own mortal lives in the face of an panoma and patomably powerful forces we exist within quick quags coffin carb while quick quag is deadly ill symbolizes at the same time both life and death decorated with patterns that mirror quick quags own tattoos the coffin symbolism of death is pretty obvious yet within the story it provides life in two cases its construction seems to bring comfort to quick quags after which he completely recovers and ishmael is saved from drowning by the coffin's ability to float it is ultimately the coffin that allows ishmael to survive moby dick's destruction of the peacod letting the gifted storyteller live to tell the tale